Our live coverage of exciting slam bang NASCAR Craftsman truck action from Martinsville Speedway being brought to you by the 4000 CarQuest Auto Parts stores across North America. And by Armor All Protect and Wipes. Armor All shine and protection now in a wipe. And remember, if we go a little bit long, RPM today coming up tomorrow morning and tomorrow night with Watson and Company. We'll have highlights and interviews, post interviews, and all the tussles in the pits after the race. We'll update everything that's happening there. And of course, weeknights, our buddy John Kernan, all the action from Motorsports. And speaking of penalties, there is the 88 truck, Matt Crafton, being penalized on pit road. Amy, what is the penalty? Well, initially it was going to be a two lap penalty. Now they said they'll hold him for three laps. Why? Because they are caught blaming Matt Crafton for the four being spun out. Crafton's version of the story is that he had seen the four was getting the move over flag lap after lap. He wasn't getting out of the way. He was simply fed up. He'll pay the price of a three lap penalty. Oh, wow. And Matt Crafton has such a great run going. Now he will come out three laps back, but that's uh, such is the nature of the short tracks NASCAR style. Back to the green flag. 18 left to go. Can Setzer hold on? You Mike Bliss fans, Bliss has recorded the fastest lap of the race earlier in the race, so he definitely has a quick truck. Again, Dennis Setzer was able to clear Robert Presley two turns before he got to turn one. Mike Bliss was not able to. That's what gives Dennis Setzer his half a dozen truck length lead right now. We are closing in on a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series record. The furthest back a driver has started in one in the history of the series. Jimmy Hensley started back in 30th in Nashville, Tennessee in August of 1998. Setzer started 33rd, and here is Bill Lester again. Keep it on. Having trouble in this Dodge. God, no. And uh, in the 75, David Starr goes around. 14th caution flag of the day. David Starr, a Houston, Texas driver. Driving for Wayne and Connie Spears, spins that truck around. He was being shown in the fourth position. Got it going, though, stayed in the lead lap. So right now we only have 12 trucks in the lead lap, on the lead lap. So that David will fall back to the 12th position. With nothing to lose, he may come on pit road now because, again, he, he's the last truck on the lead lap, so he really does not, does not lose anything. And Bill Lester may not have too many fond memories of Martinsville. He certainly has had his trouble today, but my goodness, I mean, they get, they get the car or with the truck jacked up. Let's see if we can see what happened to Bill here a moment ago. Pretty, pretty hard contact with the outside wall. Looked like he came off the corner. I'm gonna look at, watch for David Starr there. There's David. He looks like he might have got tapped by Robert Presley as they were trying to get back to the caution flag. Tough break for David Starr, who was well up into the top five. There, as, just as we thought, he came down pit road, put some tires on, nothing to lose. And there's a look at the DNF history at Martinsville. Multiple mishaps. That's why you might say we only have uh, 12 trucks on the lead lap, and David Starr is the last truck of those on the lead lap. As you take a look at Bill Lester's crew now trying to get his truck back up to speed. Remind you, coming up next will be Major League Soccer, San Jose Earthquakes, and the Kansas City Wizards. As we get these final laps of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series event in from Martinsville. So you folks tuning in for soccer, stay tuned. Some exciting Major League Soccer coming up next here on ESPN2. Hope you enjoy the final few laps of NASCAR Craftsman truck action from Martinsville, Virginia. There's Mike Bliss there, our second place runner. Former winner here on the Craftsman Truck Series. Let's, uh, let's go down to Ray Dunlap. Well, Phil Bliss has been on the radio saying that his truck's good enough to win today. Now keep in mind, they've only made one pit stop today on lap 125, took on four tires and made no adjustments. But the big news is the fact that his former crew chief, Dave Fuge, will be allowed back after a long-term NASCAR suspension starting on May 1st. So this team has committed itself to run the entire NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series this year. So we will have Mike Bliss and IWX all throughout the year. And after May 1st, his former crew chief, Dave Fuge, will be back in the racetrack. And Dave, so, and how about a great run support trooper? That's the, uh, the recovery support service for Gene Christensen there. How about the run by Bobby Dodder? There's a look at Trooper on the side of that 
truck. And look at the lack of damage on Bobby's truck. He's got a lot of experience, and he has run this race with hardly any battle scars on that truck. And that golden retriever is still smiling. He hasn't scared it at all yet today on the side of that truck. But great job by Bobby Dodder, second-generation driver. His dad, Bob Dodder, a former three-time ARCA Remax champion. Bobby out of Chicago, former NASCAR Busch Series competitor, finished second in the Winston West points two years ago out in the West Coast. Won four times there, finished second to Brendan Gaughan. And speaking of uh, not so clean trucks, <laughs> Brendan Gone, now it would be hard to believe that that truck right there is actually in ninth place. That's what I wanted to say when we saw that graphic on how many how many vehicles will fall out of a race because of accidents. That doesn't tell the whole story because if you're running around the racetrack, no matter how much damage it to finish, you're not listed out. There's a lot of trucks like, like Brendan Gaughan's right now. Most races, that truck would be listed out with, with an accident. If he called his insurance company, it'd say, don't even fix that one. Just throw that one away. We'll get another one. But uh, Brendan Gaughan, the Napa Auto Parts Dodge in ninth spot. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of the Advance Auto Parts 250. Five folks from Advance involved here at Martinsville Speedway. And our next truck race that's coming your way from St. Louis, Missouri. The Bush 200 on Sunday, May 5th, 4 o'clock Eastern time. It was a Dodge domination last year. We'll head out there. Kenny Schrader will be back. We mentioned Mike Bliss will be there. The gateway to St. Louis coming your way. NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series time. I'm glad we have a couple weeks between this race and, and St. Louis. Now, that'll give a guys a little chance for the tippers to cool. Well, plus he's going to have to have time for everybody to get a number and get inside that big red truck down there. There's Angie Wilson. And Angie has no brakes, so she's come on the pit road. Angie, by the way, will run the remaining 20 events of the year. She will run for Rookie of the Year, so glad to have Angie on board. Only the second uh, woman competitor in the history of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Started racing in the go-karts and dirt racing back when she was 13 years of age. She's been running the NASCAR Goodies Dash Series. That's a great series. That's actually the series I started in when it was called the Baby Grand Division back in uh, 1978 the Goodies Dash Series and had an awful lot of fun there. Fortunate enough to win a few races and uh, was, was able to move on to the late model sportsman series, which was a full runner of the Bush Series. Absolutely. Great crowd on hand here at Martinsville. Hope you fans that are watching this today and they're telling us probably one of the biggest Saturday crowds they have ever had here to watch exciting action and we are glad to have you with us and again a reminder those of you tuning in for Major League Soccer that's coming up at this momentarily as we are less than 10 laps away from the checkered flag. Inside of 10 laps to go, single foul restart. No lap trucks to worry about for these leaders. Look at Bobby Dodder on the outside of Rick Crawford. Here goes Dodder on the outside. That is for fourth position. See if Bobby can hang and look at John Wood sticking his nose up in there. See, said, please, Rick, go on so I can get, get by Bobby Dodder. It is Chevy, Chevy, Ford, Ford in the top four. Sets her bliss in Chevy's cooking Crawford in four. Bobby's not going to be able to make that outside pass work. Look at Rick Crawford. Look on the inside of Terry Cook. And Crawford gives Cook a nudge up in turn three. Trying to get him off the bottom and of the racetrack. And Cook up off the racetrack. Here's Crawford on the inside. He got Cook a little bit out of shape. And Crawford on the inside to make the pass in turn one. And Rick Crawford will take third spot away. The door may be open for Bobby Donner to take the four spot. Here is Donner on the inside. Bobby's able to get in the throttle, stay on the bottom of the racetrack, drive straight off the corner and able to get on by Terry Cook. Great move by Bobby Donner. Absolutely. That moves Cook back to fifth. Now he gets a little bit of a hammer from the two truck of Jason Leffler. But is he, he has to thank Rick Crawford for opening the door for him. Five laps to go in Martinsville Speedway. Dennis Setzer from back of the pack. Battle for ninth spot. Here is David Starr, who restarted back the last truck on the lead lap in 12th position, and Starr is coming in a hurry. So he was able, because he was the last truck on the lead lap, he came in the pits and got tires, so he is, has fresher tires right now than anybody else on the racetrack. Four laps to go. Here is, that's Kenny Schrader in the 52 truck in 11th spot. John Wood in the Navy machine. Being shown in 10th position, David Starr in 9th. David Starr now chasing Brendan Gaughan. He only has three laps to go. He's got, he has better tires right now than Brendan Gaughan, but we'll see if he has enough time to catch him. Back up front, Dennis Setzer trying to hang on for two more laps. Two to go. 
for 42-year-old Newton, North Carolina driver. Here's the battle, bumping and shoving, Leffler and Terry Cook. Cook holds the position, Leffler wants it. Look at David Starr on the inside of Brendan Gaughan. That's for, that's for, that's for eight spot. Side by side again, David Starr has fresher tires on Brendan Gaughan. White flag, at turn five. Final lap, there is Setzer out of turn two. Bliss in second, Crawford third. Down out of turn four, 42-year-old Dennis Setzer wins at Martinsville Speedway. Setzer, Bliss, Crawford, Daughter, and Terry Cook in the top five. 14 caution flags. The crew chief John Monson up on top of the box celebrating. Let's go down to Amy East. Amy? High fives all over the place. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, these guys needed that after yesterday. All right, and he got it. Dennis Setzer gets his seventh career victory. He had not won since June of a year ago in Memphis, Tennessee. He sets a record. No one has come from further back in the field to win a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race. Sets it from 33rd to the front. For Phil Parsons, Ray Dunlap, and Amy Yeast, I'm Jerry Putz. Congratulated Dennis Setzer on his win in the Advanced Auto Parts 250. Remember, coming up next, Major League Soccer. Join us next Sunday, May 5th, in St. Louis for the Bush 200 at Gateway International. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Once again, congratulations to Dennis Setzer.